Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. There was a cholera outbreak in London. Mm. And at that time, one of the doctors at that time said, what's strange is, if people are getting things being spread to them through the air, why are they vomiting and having diarrhea? That don't make any sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then he found that there was a water well mm -hmm. that was centrally located to where all the cholera cases were. Mm -hmm. And he convinced the authorities at that time, mm -hmm. I think something is coming from this water well. Mm -hmm. Shut it down. Mm -hmm. They shut it down. What happened to their numbers? It dropped. Yes. Then came the microscope. Mm -hmm. And um, Van Hoek and and, and Pasteur, and they're looking at the microscope and going, whoa, we're seeing these things, animalcules and bacteria-looking stuff. Mm -hmm. So what did they start doing? They were using mice at that time. Yes. And they would inoculate some mice, and they go, whoa, they got something. Mm -hmm. And they now were able to directly correlate, mm -hmm. and hence we have what's called the germ theory, mm -hmm. that diseases occur because of some little things that we can't see, mm -hmm. bacteria, fungi, viruses, protozoa. Mm. These things impact the human body. Mm -hmm. And then as we gradually expanded on that knowledge, we figured out how they impact, what they do, and so on, right? Mm. And so for someone now to come and tell you, mm. if you say there's no such thing as coronavirus, mm. fine. Are you going to accept that there's, there's something that's called causing pneumonia? Are you going to accept that there, there was there, there's something that sometimes causes diarrhea and it's a, it's a bacteria? Mm -hmm. Are you going to accept that there are organisms and there's there's germ and there's these there, there are these organs that you can see under the microscope? Are you accepting that? Mm -hmm. If you accept that, but you say no to the coronavirus, it means one of two things. One, your distrust of medicine is so high mm -hmm. that even when all the evidence is put in front of you, you're like, no, no, mm -hmm. no. Not gonna take it. Yes. Or you just don't know. And in the case that you don't know, you need to be educated. All right. Mm -hmm. So now we get to a situation where there's a virus that's impacting people, mm -hmm. but it seems to be impacting more persons than the others. Mm -hmm. That's a healthcare disparity. Yes. Why is it affecting? one set of persons more than the other. Yeah. That's what we need to be looking into because mm -hmm. that's, that's literally what is happening. Mm -hmm. But the time that we spread or the time that we spend trying to say it's not true, it's not, when people are dropping like flies, I gotta mm -hmm. scratch my head like, really? Is this, is this, is this, is, is this what you want to do? Mm -hmm. And what's so amazing or what I find so, not even amazing, but what I find so sad mm -hmm. is that the people who, whose life are the greatest at risk are the elders in our community. Mm. The people who hold the history, yes. the, 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 the culture, the ones who are going to translate mm. to the other generation. These are the ones who are being severely impacted. And you running around with your young self like, don't believe them, don't believe them, don't believe them. Mm. But your grandmother is at huge risk. Mm -hmm. Your grand uncle is at huge risk mm -hmm. and they're coming to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And these numbers are clear. They are reported numbers. Mm -hmm. And if not that I witnessed it myself, I would scratch my head like, hey, are these numbers real? And mm -hmm. I've had individuals call me mm -hmm. from across different countries, even in the US. Mm -hmm. is it really so like, is it, is it really that bad in New York? It's bad. Mm -hmm. It's bad. Mm -hmm. It was affecting our own colleagues. We we're caring for patients and we are paranoid. Mm -hmm. Like, man, this, I could get this. Yes. This could affect me. Yes. And while you're doing that, somebody's shouting from outside, it's noise. <laughs> you're like, bro, <laughs> no. come on, man. I, I don't want to deal with this right now. Yeah. Then we got to go back home to our families. Mm -hmm. And there are people who they're living with their grandparents, mm -hmm. their parents. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it, it impacts. Mm -hmm. I speak to family members who are crying on the other line. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. because they believe they're the ones who caused their grandfather to be in the hospital. Wow. They believe they're the ones who caused their mom to be in the hospital. Mm -hmm. I will never forget one young lady said to me, she's like, Doc, I did everything possible. Mm -hmm. I wear gloves. I, 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 I try to put on masks. This is pain in my garden. Doc? Yeah, I think I lost you. Yeah, yeah. We got to go back to I did everything possible with the, the story of the, the girl. I, I did everything. Right. So, you know, I remember there's, there's a young lady and she said, I did everything possible. Mm. I tried to count the people who came to interact with her. Mm. I tried to minimize my own contact with her. I put on gloves, whoever was going to prepare her food. And so there are secondary effects. That is not just the people who are dying, but it's the family members who have to now wait and wonder what's going to happen to their loved ones. Mm -hmm. What's interesting, especially in the Muslim community, is we all know how important it is for Janazah. Mm, yes. In the early time when it just hit, mm -hmm. all you would get was a picture of where your family member was buried because you couldn't come for the body. Mm. You know, these are the stories that I was hearing. And I was like, man, subhanAllah, this is, this is heart-wrenching. This is difficult. You know, Abu Usama, he did an interview on the Young Smirks recently, or Sheikh Abu Usama, and he, uh, the brother John Fontaine asked him straight up, you know, like, were, were you hit hard in the virus, right? He, he wasn't going into detail like how we are right now. He goes, yeah, we were hit very hard. He goes, some of, we were even debating whether we could wash some of these bodies or not. That's how many bodies we got. That's Abu Usama. He has no ulterior motive to mention something like that. You know what I mean? And really, he's not in the discussion of whether it's fake or not. He was just asked a simple question. He gave a simple answer. Sheikh, it's been an, uh, an eventful few months. You know, um, we've had the, uh, the time of Corona, you know, of the Corona pandemic where, you know, people have been on lockdown throughout the world. We've also had the recent, uh, if you like, protests that have been happening throughout the States and also more recently uh, the past few days here in the UK as well. So I wanted to touch upon a few of these topics first. Um, how have you managed in the lockdown, with the corona lockdown? Well, the corona pandemic uh, was a disruptive force in the lives of everybody for the most part. And uh, our community here in Liverpool was no exception to that. I remember quite vividly when we decided that we we're going to lock everything down. There were a lot of people from the community who were not happy about that because people couldn't fathom not coming to the masjid. You know, we have Muslims, alhamdulillah, who are connected to the houses of Allah as well. Mm -hmm. as, as well. So from that day until today, it's been something that everybody has been trying to get used to. And although they are loosening up these uh, regulations and the request for social distancing, although that is the case, there's still that fear that's in the air, at least in my mind anyway, that there can be another spike. There could be a spike in the number of people who have been afflicted by this coronavirus. May Allah yeah. protect all of us. I mean, I mean, I mean, have you had many people in your community pass away due to the virus? Yeah, we had quite a few people, especially at the beginning. And uh, we had to make a call and make a decision. Do we wash those bodies? How do we deal with those bodies? Like many other masajid, it wasn't something that was peculiar to us. It was really a strange phenomenon, to be honest with you. But again, there's a bright side in it, a lot of bright sides in it, a lot of lessons to be learned and to be taken away. And one of those lessons is, no matter what confronts us as Muslims and an ummah, we have a religion that teaches us and tells us and gives us instructions how to deal with it. So yeah. we've been resilient and inshallah we'll be coming out of this pandemic soon. You know what I mean? That's the reality. 
-hmm. That's the reality. We need to start talking to people who are genuinely impacted by this. If we, yes. if we want to change the narrative, which is why I appreciate you asking me to come on. And you know, we had a bit of a back and forth. I'm like, nah, yeah. I don't want to. But then you're right. Alhamdulillah, you're right. Yeah, because yeah. if we don't change the narrative, then mm -hmm. one narrative continues to be promoted. Bread, and then yes. it becomes a huge and we'll lie, It's haram. It's haram. It's haram because you're putting people's lives at risk, like literally, yeah. literally. You yeah. know, yeah, it's, it's, spreading it's, it's, misinformation and the amount of misinformation that is available is just ridiculous. You know, it's crazy. It's crazy. You know, uh, Dr. I, um, Dr. Um, T. Jenny, I want to show you a small video clip. Okay. Right? And I want you to comment on this video clip, inshallah. Okay. Okay. In on me. Yes. 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 I love you. In love me? Yes. 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 Only you.